One of the things that we're trying to do in the Brain Lab is give these folks options for quality of life by controlling computers and other devices with only their brain signals. Melody Moore Jackson is the big thinker behind Georgia Tech's Brain Lab, inventing brain control devices for people with severe disabilities. She's the head designer of the Aware Chair, a revolutionary wheelchair that's controlled by a person's brain waves. The chair's design, which Melody has been working on for almost a decade, took a major leap forward when she teamed up with Michael Boyce, a grad student at Georgia Tech. Michael has cerebral palsy. He's used a wheelchair since he was seven. In the lab, he's taken an ordinary wheelchair and turned it into a brain-controlled prototype. To control the chair, all Michael has to do is look at one of four patterns on his computer screen, each flashing at a different rate. For a paralyzed person, they're like a virtual steering wheel that tell the chair which way to go. So recent experiments and all this cyborg stuff is really very new. You know, last 10 years, almost everything I've shown you is I think last 10 years. Um, so controlling external um, devices. So we saw, we, the, the statement that I like the most is the statement that you saw in the little clip that says um, controlling the world with just your brain, right? That's kind of one side of brain in the that. That's that you think something and it has an effectiveness in the outside world without going through your muscles, right? Just thinking it. So they put a cap on you and that cap reads the state of your mind and when the state of your mind is in state A, Effect A happens when you state of your mind is an effect B, effect B happens. So this is output only as well. It's not input, but it, it and it's and it's very low fidelity as well. I mean you can see the thing that, that the guy in the wheelchair, right? He's got four patterns and he looks at pattern A, B, C, and D. Well, that's a really different than control over movement, right? He's got only four things. Well, how many things are there in movement? There's a lot more than four. So very low fidelity, but still interesting. And I would suspect that this fidelity on the output side is going to be the same as we saw in the virtual reality world, that eventually the guy, with, even with very low fidelity, he can make his wheelchair go wherever he wants it to, and he's going to end up feeling, after getting fully you know, versed in that system, he's going to end up feeling like that's the world he lives in, that's how he moves, that's how it is. So it will become his reality, and just as much as walking around is, you know, some, is, a, is, a, um, is somebody else's reality, thinking go left, go right, go forward, go back is going to become his reality so he will eventually become immersed in it. 